It's a Huskies versus Musketeers weekend. The men square off a gamble tomorrow, tonight, here at Cintas Center. It's the 10th ranked Yukon Huskies against the Xavier Musketeers at Big East Play. Tip off is just minutes away. And hi, everybody from Cincinnati with Megan Cuomo. I'm Alan Bestwick. So this season of shuffled lineups and injury absences, people in and out, and people stepping up at different times has shown us in the last couple of games what our very highly coveted recruit can do for this team, and that's AZ Fudd. Well, gosh, you know, what impresses me the most, Alan, is just how comfortable AZ Fudd looks on the basketball floor when she's playing. You know, she missed 11 games with that foot injury immediately made her presence felt you know she's known as a three-point shooter but i've been impressed with how she's been able to get to the basket score off the dribble she's more than just a three-point shooter but the poise and the way she plays particularly late in the game shows you what a big time player crunch time player this kid is yeah she's certainly helped fix a couple of weaknesses of this husky team fourth quarter performance mid-season and three-point shooting and the fabulous freshman has been great at both of those someone else who's really stepped up for the huskies these last couple of games has been the graduate transfer from hungary dorka Juhas had her best two games in a yukon uniform i think it's fair to say in these last two absolutely and, and think about it i mean first of all she's a transfer but she's come in and she's really bought into the program and and the, the way she's played the last two games tells me she's really taking ownership she's putting the team on her shoulders without olivia nelson adona the last several games they needed her to step up and boy did she ever inside outside some emotion she's playing with leadership and toughness she's stepping up at exactly the right time and they'll look for her to step up again tonight just as she has in the prior two games you see 22 and 21 points in the last two for dorka Juhas. So tonight, it's the final game on the road for the UConn in the regular season. They'll finish everything else up at either XL or Gamble. But tonight, we're in Cincinnati, and we're about to find out who tomorrow's headline maker is. It's UConn and Xavier. Tip-off is next, live on SNY. As we get set to tip-off tonight here in Cincinnati. So uh, Paige Beckers with the team here. Good to see her return to practice this week. Uh, she was uh, on the floor with the team during shoot around this morning. She was on the floor here during some warm ups, though not in uniform tonight. But getting closer. And still an enormously popular figure. Sign my ball. <laughs> People lined up around the tunnel where uh, UConn comes out of the locker room here at Cintas. And Paige, very patient and accommodating to all of the fans. But again, Becker's not in the lineup tonight. Our starting lineups are presented by Subaru of New England. For the Huskies, same five as the last two games. So Nelson Adota and Ducharme will come off the bench in this one on their return from injury. And uh, the five on the right for Xavier. Musketeers with just eight available players tonight. That's five of the eight. Gino Orieva seeking his 22nd Big East regular season title with the Huskies and Coach Melanie Moore in her third season, leading things here at Cincinnati for the Musketeers from the Kim Barnes and Rico coaching tree, if you will. And looking for her squad to just compete for the full 40 minutes tonight. Yeah, they've, they've gotten, they've lost some players by choice the last couple of weeks. They got rid of their top two scorers. So they are down in numbers, but they are up in spirit. So UConn in the national flag blue road uniforms with the red and white trim with the first crack at it in the second meeting this season between the Huskies and Musketeers. Aliyah Edwards, no. And a rebound by Anna Harris. 15, Michaela Scarlett is the three-point shooter for Xavier. And there's going to be the first turnover of the ball game. Turnovers were a problem when these two teams met for the first time this season on January 15th back in Hartford. And there's a turnover on the Husky Speaking side. Of. Yeah, I know. Don't blame the announcer. Just remember. Xavier in that uh, January 15th game turned the ball over 24 times, or maybe better said, UConn forced 24 turnovers. Huskies had 15 block shots and 16 steals in that game. Quite a defensive performance. There is Townsend with the miss right into the hands of Kristen Williams.
Going to be a foul inside called on Shayla Beeler as uh, she and Aaliyah Edwards kind of wrestled for position. Something the Huskies have been doing better these last couple of games, taking care of the ball. They have had only three games all season with just single-digit turnovers. Two of them the last two games. I mean, that's just unacceptable to turn the ball over that much. Nice, aggressive take by Kristen Williams. But, you know, some of that could be all the different lineups, the yeah. shuffling of players, injury, COVID protocol, whatever it is. They've got to start taking care of the ball, certainly at this time of year, heading into postseason. Shelby Calhoun, zero with the ball for Xavier. Courtney Pringer, shot clock already down to seven, six, five. Calhoun drives, cut off by Edwards, makes a tough shot that does not hit anything but the side of the backboard. Here's Fudd for three. No, too strong. Good effort by uh, Anaya Harris to get to the ball, but now it results in an odd man possession for the Huskies, and Juhas couldn't hit the shot. Here's Harris again, but she's one on three. She'll stop. Shot misses, and Juhas will get fouled if she gets the rebound by Ayanna Townsend. No. Stepped on the end line. Out of bounds. All right, it'll be uh, Xavier Ball. So here are some of the storylines for this UConn team. Of course, the snap streaks. The injuries, the long COVID layoff. Nine different starting lineups. You know, Gino Oriema is a coach that likes to pretty much stick with the same lineup, have that consistency. Franger will lose the ball out of bounds. Yeah, and only two players have played every game this season for UConn. Should we make that a quiz or should we just say it? Avina Westbrook and Aaliyah Edwards, the only two that have played in every game this season. Friday night, give people a break. <laughs> Thank you. There's Fudd for three. Such a sweet stroke. Quick 5-0 lead for the Huskies. Harris working on Fudd. Cut off by Juhas, the spin with the right hand, shot short. And Fudd will come up with the rebound for UConn. That was well defended by Fudd. The kick to a wide open Kristen Williams. No. But there is Aaliyah Edwards for the rebound, and she'll quickly get fouled. That'll be Anaya Harris. Fudd moves well without the basketball. Nice screen by Aaliyah Edwards. And you know, when she did, what is so impressive is how quickly she moves. And she knows exactly catch and shoot. Doesn't take long. No, feet are ready, hands ready. Kristen Williams looking to make space, but runs into a double team. And will succeed in getting the tied up ball between three Xavier defenders. But it'll be Musketeer basketball on the possession arrow. So first sub of the ball game, Michaela Scarlett, 15 into the ball game for Xavier. She is the three point shooter for the Musketeers. She's made half of the team's three-pointers this year. And that's going to be a foul on Mule on the attempted inbound pass. That'll be her first. Mule's done a really good job the last few games of staying within herself. This game is already a little chippy. You can see some, some physical play. It's important for her to keep her composure. Scarlett cut off by Juhas. Here's Calhoun. Shot misses. That was Pranger who attempted the turnaround. Looking for a foul call. Didn't get one. Edwards inside to Juhas. Gets fouled. Trying to go up with it. They worked a lot on that high-low. Today, it's shoot around. Good pass from Edwards. See, so Juhas look a great position by Juhas. Good job to track that ball down. It's just a little bit high. 
Nice play by Juhasz. Good pass it from Edwards. Two shots. So Dorka Yuha steps to the free throw line. We told you about the 22 and 21 points in the last two games. The three point shooting's been pretty good too. Two of three against DePaul, three of five at Marquette, plus a season high four assists in each of the last three games. It's a good time for her to be playing her best basketball. Mule to Williams. Townsend with the good defensive position. Fudd. And they're going to call a foul on Yukon. That'll be Aaliyah Edwards who picks it up on the rebounding attempt. It's very physical inside that lane. So here comes Olivia Nelson Adota into the ball game for the first time. After missing the last three, she'll sub in for Dorka Yuhas. And so far in this ball game, Xavier 0 for 5 on their shot attempts. Townsend 0 for 6. Ball on the floor, Calhoun and Mule will have a tied up ball. And it'll be Yukon's on the alternating possession. And that possession is all because of Nika Mew's ex just tremendous hustle. As you see Nelson Adota, those numbers, it's nice to see her back on the floor. After missing those three games with a groin injury. Davina Westbrook into the ball game. Also, Kristen Williams goes to the bench for her first rest just before midway of quarter one. Here's Nelson Adota with the ball. Sets the screen for Fudd. Who drives, floats it up over three players, and will get called for the offensive foul. I mean, that's, look, it's one on three, one on four. Not a great decision. And, and sometimes when you make decisions that aren't great ones, you're going to get <laughs> a call like that. They are the charge. Good job by Xavier. And a Townsend picking up the charge. Scarlett just kind of wildly off balance into the lane, but I think Nelson Adota was inside the restricted arc, and thus the call on her for the foul. And Caroline Ducharme also checks into the ball game for UConn after she missed four games. So both Nelson Adota and Ducharme in before we're midway in quarter number one. Michaela Scarlett gets the first point of the game for Xavier. Sophomore from the Bronx, New York. One of only two to play in all 24, now 25 games for Xavier this season. And they're, you know, Mel Moore is trying to build a program in her third year. You know, they just got rid of a couple of players, as I alluded to before. You got to have people who are who want in and want to be a part of building something great. Ducharme stops and pops. First touch, Showing, first bucket. Yeah, no rust. <laughs> the freshman, after missing four games. I'll tell you, this morning in the morning shoot around, she hit like five, six straight shots. And that'll be a foul and one. Shayla Beeler will get the bucket, and AZ Fudd will get her second foul of the ball game. And lead us to a timeout with 4.35 to go in quarter number one. 5-0 start for the Huskies, now 7-4 UConn. The Blue Blob mascot on hand here at Cintas Center tonight at the uh, four and a half to go timeout. UConn leading by three, and Maria Marino's first in-game report tonight, presented by Toyota. Maria. Thanks, Alan. One thing that Coach Oriema has stressed to us about Caroline Ducharme as recently as this afternoon is she's not afraid to attack and shoot. That includes driving to the basket and finishing. He calls her the best on the team at that. She told me it's a combination of skill and mentality that makes her effective. She reads the defense, and at 6-2, a lot of times she has a smaller guard on her, so she's able to take advantage, go over top of them, and if a post player is on her, she tries to use different angles to score. Well, certainly a welcome sight back in the lineup for the Huskies tonight as Shayla Beeler steps to the free throw line to try and add the extra here. 
after AZ Fudd picked up her second foul. I was impressed, Ducharme coming in, showing no rush, the freshman. Peter Westbrook drives, gets it blocked. That'll be UConn ball. Surprised they didn't call a foul there. But speaking of fouls, I'm surprised Fudd's still in the game with two fouls. Yeah, before we're done with the first quarter, they will get that to Ducharme, and she will draw the foul. That'll be Keisha Woods, the freshman from Lincoln, Nebraska, who will pick up her first. And <laughs> Gino will send Kristen Williams in to get AZ Fudd out of the ball game with four and a half to go in quarter number one. Well, just the lineup here, this play with her getting her second foul, this is exactly why they need these bodies, because now they actually have a little bit of a rotation. Yeah. One of two for Caroline Ducharme. And is it, it is a three-point UConn lead. Xavier one of seven from the floor so far in the game. UConn three of nine. Interesting full-court pressure back into a little half-court zone defense. Scarlett, no, too strong in the three. Leah Edwards taps the rebound off of Courtney Pranger. It'll be UConn basketball. And the whistle for subs coming in. Kind of a little halting start. Maybe, you know, yes. they played so many games Slow in so many and days. And yeah. We're looking for that time off to let everybody get some rest and recovery. But maybe a little out of rhythm here for UConn. Here's Nelson Adota. Working on Townsend. Steps under. Gets it to go with a strong right-hand move. She had a big game in that first matchup back in Connecticut. Yes, she did. Starting strong here tonight. 11.6 rebounds and a career-high eight blocks in that game. Foul underneath, and Nelson Adota is down after stepping across a foot. See, she, with this one-on-one, -on -one, she knew she could she could take that kid. You could just tell the confidence that she moved with. Ayanna Townsend picked up her second foul. Nelson Adota continues in the ball game. And it's a five-point UConn lead. Ducharme off to Nelson Adota's screen. Has her pass knocked away. Right hand, no. Ball on the floor for the rebound. Franger up, miss. That'll be knocked out of bounds off of UConn. So AZ Fudd back into the ball game for Caroline Ducharme. Here comes Dorka Juhas back into the ball game for Olivia Nelson Adota. And uh, the Musketeers with 18 to shoot here. And Shelby Calhoun gets away from Fudd. Hey, perfectly executed inbounds play there by Xavier. Kristen Williams calls Aaliyah Edwards out. Juhas trying to post up. That's going to be a foul underneath. And so check, yeah, well, look at that nice curl around that. That line up that side of the side of the lane. Really nice play. UConn caught sleeping. And Meg, while you were describing that replay, official Bruce Morris had to step in. You talked about how chippy the game has been at the start. He had to step in between a couple of players and say, hey, everybody calm down. So here is Dorka Juhas to shoot free throws for a second time in the game. Missed them both the first time. Got the first one here. One of two. Huskies with some front court pressure now. Beeler tries to get by Kristen Williams and does. Flips it inside. That was a pass going awry. Get 
blocked inside, and here come the Huskies. Westbrook on the run. Buharts. Contact with Townsend, and the ball got away. Well, you can't say this game is pretty. What you can say is if Coach Mel Moore wanted her team to compete hard, <laughs> they are doing it. Ten to shoot. Harris drives. Knocked away by Kristen Williams with the block. Westbrook, nice pass to Aaliyah Edwards. What a pretty play there by Westbrook. And a good job running the floor by Aaliyah Edwards. Minute and a half to go, quarter number one, six point UConn lead. Here's Beeler, works off the Pranger screen. Now has Fudd defending. Stops at the free throw line. No. Back iron. Tough shooting quarter for Xavier. Two of 14 from the floor. Kristen Williams. Tough shot, but gets the bounce and the bucket. Love the feel, the atmosphere. Good crowd here in the building tonight. A lot of intensity. This is a beautiful arena, too. Here's Townsend on Edwards. Missed the shot short. Huskies fumble it away, but it goes out of bounds off Pranger with the UConn's basketball. <laughs> UConn got lucky it yes, went off they Pranger. Did. So Juhas back to the bench. Nelson Adota back in. 31.1 to go in the quarter. And they'll reset the shot clock for 28 seconds. So slight difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Avina Westbrook saying to her teammates, wait, wait, wait. Beeler out to try and make them not wait. Inside, Edwards, and one. What a great play by Edwards down low. I like the energy she's got early. I just, I just, the quick release, just catch, turn, shoot. Perfect pass. Don't waste any time. It's a tough matchup. Aaliyah Edwards had a spectacular game when UConn visited Cintas Center a year ago. Had 16 and 10, one of her three career double-doubles last February. And adds the free throw there to make it an 8-0 run for the Huskies over the last two and a half minutes. Wow, how'd that pass get through? Pounds in. Nelson Adore there to provide the defense, but Calhoun cleans it up as time expires in quarter number one. Well, if you want it chippy, competitive, intense, you're getting it tonight in Cincinnati. Huskies lead by nine after one. Great atmosphere tonight here at Cintas Center in Cincinnati as UConn leads Xavier by nine after the first quarter. So our UConn Fan Choice Poll presented by Duncan. Tonight we're asking you, how many Big East teams do you think will make the NCAA Women's Tournament? So there are five Big East teams in the top 78 of the NCAA's net rankings. And some of the bracketologists only have three in the field of 68. Let us know what you think. We'll check out the results later on in the program. SNY.tv slash vote game is how you cast your ballot. It's a great question. It is. It is. It'll be fascinating to see. It will be. All right, so Xavier has the ball to start his second quarter. Shooting a problem for the Musketeers in the first. You see there, just three of 17 from the floor. That's 18%. Knocked away from Harkey, out of bounds. It'll be Xavier basketball, 17 to shoot. Thoughts on the first quarter in the Huskies play? 
You know what? I, I thought they looked a little sluggish, a little slow. You know, some of that's because of the way Xavier plays. But UConn could be a little sharper. Always get everybody's best shot, especially on the road, early. Shot clock at five. Here's Beeler working on Mule. Tries to work through traffic. Missed everything. That'll be a time violation and a turnover to UConn. It's always a good thing defensively. If you can force a shot clock violation, that is, I mean, it's frustrating when you're the coach on the offensive end that does it. But for, for your defense, it's a great confidence booster. Williams, Edwards, Nelson, Adota, Mule, and Westbrook, the five on the floor for UConn. Here's Williams. No. Edwards with the offensive board and the putback. What a terrific effort there by Edwards to track down that offensive rebound. From the corner, four, three. That was Keisha Woods, the freshman. Turnover by UConn, two on one. Calhoun had to wait on the pass. Kristen Williams got there and helped the shot miss. Woods again, that goes. That's a two. So five straight points for the freshman from Lincoln, Nebraska. She only had two threes coming into the game. That's gonna go to, as the defense sagged into the paint. Now Edwards. Westbrook cuts, kicks, and misses. Nika Mule, turnover, UConn. Nice kick out by Calhoun. The good finish from Woods. <laughs> They're feeling it. So Xavier's top two scorers of the season are no longer with the team after having been suspended for a couple of games for a violation of team rules. So again, the home team playing with just eight and two of those eight with two fouls by the end of the first quarter. Something, something to keep yeah, an eye on. Sometimes you do have addition by subtraction. Good ball movement. Calhoun drives over the top of Nelson Adota, but missed. And Nelson Adota with a strong rebound. Edwards to a wide open mule, sets the feet, and gets it to go. In order to open up things inside, UConn has to hit those long range shots. So the three pointer there from Nika Mule gives the Huskies. 23-14 lead. Here's Woods again from outside. Yes! Feeling it tonight. <laughs> that is great. Her season high is six. She's passed that just in this first part of the second quarter. Three from Duchar missed. Edwards with another offensive board. She twisted her ankle when she came down. Under, up and in for Caroline Ducharme. Five for Ducharme, two of three from the floor. I'd just keep feeding 12 in white if I were them until she misses. Yeah. Tried to get it inside, ball on the floor. Here's Woods, shot clock down to four. And a foul will bail out Xavier. Yeah, Kristen Williams got caught. You see her there holding the kid, the right hand. It's a clear foul. And as you said, it bailed Xavier out. They were, the shot clock was about to expire. Yep. Those are plays that drive coaches <laughs> insane. Right? Now, foul on Kristen Williams. So Nelson Adota to the bench. Here's Townsend on Edwards. Over and in. Nice little step back by Townsend. So difficult to block that shot. Pass into traffic. Ill advised. Ball on the floor. There'll be hands put on it. No timeout, timeout, Xavier. 
Xavier given the timeout call before the tie-up happened. So we'll take a timeout with 6.05 to go in the second quarter. Six-point lead for UConn over Xavier. There's your score, six-point lead for the Huskies. Aliyah Edwards leading UConn in both scoring and rebounding so far in this one. Well, the energy that Aliyah Edwards is playing with tonight is what we saw all last year. Great job running the floor, attacking the offensive glass, sharing the ball with her teammates. She's got seven points, six rebounds, and you just saw that assist. Just been so dominating in this first half. Just bringing the physicality in the paint, and uh, someone has to to match the physicality that Xavier has brought to this game so far. In this quarter, Xavier has outscored UConn. Look at how they started in the first quarter and how they played in the second quarter. And by the way, the, the freshman, Keisha Woods, has scored eight of those 10 points for Xavier in this quarter. She was averaging one point a game coming in surpassing her season high in a part of a quarter against <laughs> UConn of all things good for her that's right she wears 12 Calhoun handles the ball now it's Pringer shot clock already at five over the top of Juhas goes Calhoun no and Bouchard will be fouled by Woods as she went up and got the rebound and foul trouble is beginning to stack up pretty quickly because that is now the third player with two fouls for Xavier. Yeah, let's remember, they only have eight. And we still are not even halfway through quarter number two. Fudd, the quick release for three. And that's what will spread out that zone defense. AZ Fudd, two of three from long range tonight. Six points for the freshman. Remember, she also has two fouls that she picked up both in the first quarter. Scarlett drives, and she'll get shoved, shoveled out of bounds by Dorka Juhas, and that foul will be on Juhas. Well, for Fuzz, you know, sometimes when you have two fouls, it makes you play smarter defense because you know you can't commit another one. Now, she'll face that kind of pressure for uh, the rest of this quarter. And I like the confidence that Gina was putting in her, just saying, hey, listen, I'm going to keep you out there. You can't get your third. He doesn't often do that with freshmen, but she's not a normal freshman. No, no. She's shown that. Townsend works on Juhas, spins around over the straight-up arms of Juhas, and the shot missed. Ducharme with the rebound. Terrific defense by Juhas. Westbrook with all kinds of time, but didn't take the shot. Ducharme will, and get it for three. Gosh, what a difference it makes having Ducharme back healthy to play. Think about that. Two possessions, two three-pointers. Suddenly, the Huskies on a 6-0 run. And Fudd with the defensive steal. Westbrook sets a hard screen. Harris never saw it. Fudd missed the shot. Ball on the floor. Desharm gets it. And the Huskies get another chance. That was a savvy screen by Westbrook. Oh, the ball fake. Desharm from the corner. No. How Kristen Williams. How unselfish is Fudd? She could have shot that. Kristen Williams didn't have anybody within five feet of her. And the easy two for the senior. That was great ball movement. So suddenly now an 8-0 run over a minute and a half. And a steal. Westbrook ahead of the pack. What a play by Ducharme. The terrific steal and then the outstanding pass. Timeout Xavier as the Huskies have gone on a 10-0 run over less than the last two minutes. I mean, all in one motion. Just a smart play from the freshman. Great anticipation. And then the perfect lead pass.
in the January 15th game back at XL Center, UConn scored the first 11 points of the game and the first nine points of the second half. Xavier stayed with him for a lot of the first quarter in this one, but now here in the middle stages of the second, UConn on that 10-0 run over less than two minutes. And just like that, Xavier finds itself behind by 16. So 3.29 to go and counting here in quarter number two. And the pressure doesn't quite create the turnover. But the timer is running. Bueller gets around the defense. Fires cross court to Woods. Good closeout by Kristen Williams. Ten to shoot. Three, two, one. That will be a timer, a shot clock violation without a shot. Really good half court defense there by UConn. Mel Moore's got to be frustrated with that possession, but got to feel really good about the way her team has competed in this first half. Turnover count pretty even for both teams, but UConn has shot the ball much better in this one. Kristen Williams, wide open. After the defender fell down through a screen, and Calhoun with a spin away to a running peeler, but AZ Fudd right there defensively retreating. Westbrook was there and caused the travel and the turnover. That's a play that won't necessarily show up in the stat sheet, but Avina Westbrook created that turnover. Just with really good getting in her stance, forced that kid to turn it over. Squared Calhoun right up. Yeah, and, and you feel bad for Calhoun. You could tell she wanted that one back. Yeah. Leah Edwards back into the game. Nice cut by Williams. There's Yuha. No. Rebound. Wow. Aggressively taken by Harris. Husky still on a 10-0 run here. As we hit two to go, and Avita Westbrook anticipates another pass and gets another steal and score. That's the way you impact the game. Make a good, make a couple good defensive plays in a row. Score on the other end. Gino called the game at Marquette last Sunday. Avita Westbrook's best game of the season. There's Juhas with the steal. And the bucket. You know, we've said it uh, over the years. I mean, Gino's teams, as, as much as they can score, defense is what separates them. And, and we're seeing it here tonight. Just a terrific defensive effort. Turnover by the force travel. A few steals and scores. And another one in the, work, in the works here. Kristen Williams anticipating the pass. And that is an 18-2 run by UConn. As we get down to a minute to go in this first half. Megan Harkey with the ball. Here's Scarlett, shot clock running down, drives blocked by Juhas. UConn really in sync defensively right now. Just a really good help and anticipation there by Juhas. So 39.3 to go and only five to shoot for Xavier. AC fought out of the ball game with those two fouls and just a half a minute to go in this quarter. That is going to be a block called. much to the disagreement of the Yukon bench. <laughs> they were trying to help sell it. It's going to be Aaliyah Edwards' second foul. That's a good call.
35 to go. Coming up, Gary Apple and Kara Walters with the first half highlights and analysis. The UConn women's basketball halftime show is presented by Duncan. Now an 18-2 run over the last six and a half minutes for UConn in this second quarter. And the shot clock is off. They'll hold for the final possession of this period. Avina Westbrook wide open for three and got it. Really nicely executed play. Westbrook set a good screen. And then her teammates set a good screen for her. Oof. Scarlett with the three-quarter court shot off the front rim. But uh, the end of that second quarter, the Avina Westbrook show, fair to say. A couple of steals and scores. Now uh, seven points on three of four shooting. And the Huskies finish with a 19-0 run to end the second quarter to move out ahead of Xavier 44 to 19 after two. Hey Gino, a little bit of a, of a slow start to this game, but boy did your defense really make some things happen. 19-0 run there. Yeah, it, it, it's always supposed to start with our defense, you know, but um, sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes players come out and they, you know, they, they just expect the other team to lose sometimes, you know, and, you know, just because somebody doesn't have a good record doesn't mean they're not going to come out here and play their butt off, you know, so you got to make them make mistakes. You got to make them rush. You got to make them take bad shots. And, you know, that last part of the second quarter, that's exactly what we did. And, you know, that's what turned into offense for us, you know, and, um, you know, that's 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 just when you have what's the point of having a lot of players if you're not going to go out there and pressure 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 So we need to do more of that, you know, the, the entire second half Well, you have a luxury of having a bench to put in. How does that feel? <laughs> well, I mean it it certainly gives you a lot of flexibility um, You know one of the things we don't want to do is foul like if I take you out because you need a rest or whatever That's one thing if the refs take you out because you're fouling so we just got to be a little bit smarter with that You know, we can't afford to have you know really good shooters with fouls so uh, yeah I mean uh, our, our team's going to be a lot better because we have more options and uh, kids can play harder and not worry about you know saving themselves for you know the end of the game all right thanks yeah good luck second half yeah with four minutes to go in the second quarter Avina Westbrook had taken one shot had no points and no steals now she's got seven points and a few steals to go with it Gary and Karen X with the halftime show Four minutes to go in the second quarter. It was 25 to 19. It is 44 to 19. As we welcome you back inside Cintas Center in Cincinnati with Megan Como. I'm Alan Bestwick. The makings of a 19-0 run don't necessarily all start at the offensive end of the floor. Yeah, and as we've seen so much over the years, it's defense turning into offense, and they really, you can clamp down on the defensive end, and that's what changed the game. Avina Westbrook had a, a terrific second quarter defensively, making a steal, nice pass, stepping in the passing lane here, finishing on the break, and Dorka Juhas as well getting in, active hands, stealing the ball and finishing on the break. Kristen Williams did her thing, stepping in a passing lane. Seven steals in that first half. They got 13 points off of those 11 Xavier turnovers. So the Huskies went from a tough, grinding, physical matchup to uh, blowing it open in the second quarter. And you look at the scoring, eight players have played, eight players have scored. Very balanced on the offensive end of the night. This is what I'm used to seeing with the UConn teams, and to have it so spread out. To have two with eight, two with seven. One has six. AZ Fudd has got six points, two threes. She's knocked down. That's what UConn teams typically do. They spread it around, everybody gets involved. UConn will start with the ball. It's Celia Edwards, Nika Mule, Dorky Juhas, Kristen Williams, and AZ Fudd, the starting five, back on the floor to begin quarter number three. Nice curl by Fudd. Edwards defended by Townsend. And we'll draw the foul, and that is going to be the third foul on Ayanna Townsend. 
Already got, uh, they only have eight, eight, again, reminder that Xavier only has eight available players tonight, and uh, they've got some foul trouble, and we're just starting the third quarter. And that was a smart play by Edwards to take it. There's Moore for two. Nice way to start quarter number three for the Huskies. Nika Mule two for two from the floor in this one. Five points. Okay, coming out in his zone defense. And that'll be a kick ball. And so with a fresh 20 second shot clock, Xavier will inbound the ball. Scoring leader for the Musketeers was the freshman Kaiser Woods with eight points all at the very beginning of the second quarter. <laughs> Harris, Townsend, shot clock already at five. Here's Calhoun. Tries to work the screen, gets into the lane, and floats it. No. Juhas with the rebound. Fudd quickly releases the three, and it goes. How quickly did she release that shot? Wow. And on the break, the defense not even ready. That's how the three-point <laughs> shot can change the game. <laughs> and to is. have someone who shoots it so efficiently. As we talked at the, the very top of the broadcast, what an impact we've gotten to see from her these last few games, stepping up when others weren't able to play. Of course, after missing those 11 games herself. And she's only played in 11 games in college. Lee Edwards knocked the ball away in the paint. Huskies will bring it back out as Mule has to pick up the dribble. Edwards spins underneath. Ball got stuck on her hip. They'll reset. Juhas into Edwards, who got away and won. Boy, Juhas and Edwards have a nice little groove passing the ball back and forth to one another. Perfect bounce pass, nice quick release. There, Townsend was late and committed that foul. So here is Aaliyah Edwards, who had a massive game in this building a year ago, and is certainly having a great game again tonight for UConn. Adds the extra from the free throw strike, and now 10.6 rebounds for Aaliyah Edwards. She's just playing with a different purpose tonight, Aaliyah Edwards. Playing with conviction, confidence, Harkey tries to get it across to Pringer, and that goes out of bounds. That'll be a turnover to UConn. You know, you talk about Aaliyah Edwards. Now the next step for her is consistency. Almost you could look at a tape of the last, like, six games. Good game, so-so game. Good game, so-so game. And yeah, it, you, you know, yeah, I mean, you're a sophomore. you gotta, you got to be consistent. Just Mr. show up every night to play. That shot missed. Juhas on the floor fighting for the rebound. We talk about you. You talked about uh, taking ownership. Look at the hustle here by Juhas. That'll just go off her fingers and out of bounds. So Xavier still stuck on that 19, and uh, the 19-0 run has expanded to 27. Oh. Now UConn in man-to-man -man defense. Tried to get it to Woods. Pass too far ahead of her. That is going to go out of bounds. Off of Xavier. They say it was off Shelby Calhoun's foot, and it will be UConn basketball. By the way, told that this might be the biggest crowd in this building for a women's basketball game in like 10 years. It's not surprising. It often happens when UConn comes to town. UConn's just second year back in the Big East. And, of course, no fans here last year. Just very few. There's Nick Camille. Yes for three. 
Nick is in a great little groove right now. The last several games she's played, taking the right shots, not getting outside of herself, just doing what she can do. Calhoun, too strong. Here's Edwards with the rebound and run. And skip pass to Fudd. Stops and pops. And that's a part of her game that's fun to watch as well. She's not just a stand-up three-point shooter. That's 11 now for Fudd. And the lead for UConn. Now uh, goes to a 32 to nothing run. Scarlett. No. You're supposed to get that shot on your home court. Pringer with the rebound. Shot clock already back down to six, five now. Here's Courtney Pringer, blocked by Juhas. Outstanding block by Dorka Juhas. I like the aggressive take from Pringer. She turned the corner, Juhas with the help. So just two to shoot for Xavier on the inbound play. Pringer will get a shot away. Hit the front iron, they'll get the offensive rebound. And that will be a blocking foul as Woods went to the rim, and it'll be Mule called for her second. Nika Mule really thought that was a charge. Well, the sophomore has had five or more assists in five straight games, five and six rebounds apiece in the last couple of games prior to today. And you mentioned the shooting rhythm she's gotten into as well. And Mule will head to the bench and get a breather here after picking up just her second foul. So Westbrook into the ball game, Nelson Adota into the ball game for Juhas. And here is Kasia Woods, the freshman from Lincoln, Nebraska. Trying to stop that. And can't from the free throw line. Ball on the floor, went right through AC Fudd's legs. And so Xavier will get another chance at it. UConn 13 to nothing this quarter. Shot clock again at five. There's Harris blocked. Ball on the floor. Fudd will come up with it before it goes out of bounds. Thirty-eight point lead for the Huskies, their largest of the ball game. Nelson Agoda to Williams, into the bucket for three. That'll be 11 now for Kristen Williams, and her first made three of the ball game. Try to get the ball into the paint to Pringer. That'll be a tied up basketball. And will send us to a timeout with 4.19 to go in quarter number three. 16 nothing UConn this quarter. They've been good in the paint. They've been good from outside in this quarter as well. It is a 41 point lead for UConn at Xavier tonight. 35-0 run over the last 12 minutes of play for the Huskies over the Musketeers. Let's check in with Maria Marino. Hey, Alan. Since AZ Fudd's return from injury, she has made a concerted effort to be more aggressive shooting the ball. She's averaging 20 points per game over her last four, but she says she still sometimes gets yelled at for coming off screens and looking to pass.
just today at practice, I heard Coach Oriema yelling for her to shoot the ball. I think she got the memo. Uh, she told me, though, the key is staying ready to shoot, looking for the shot, but if it's not there, reading the defense and making the right pass. Yeah, Maria, we got concerned when Fudd picked up two fouls in the first quarter of this game, but she's still out there going at it. Nelson Adota with the rebound, as uh, Xavier only had two seconds to shoot on the inbound play off the timeout. And let's be honest, it's not bad being too unselfish, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no doubt she has found her rhythm in this one. Fudd starts this period out for a spell. Here's Nelson Adota, the big left-hand step missed. Nelson Adota. What a good take by Nelson Adota. Just couldn't finish. Nelson Adota, Edwards, Ducharme, Williams, and Westbrook. The five on the floor. And, and there was a collision there after Nelson Adota took that shot. And Aliyah Edwards was kind of shaking her left wrist a little bit. Keep an eye on that. Shot clock quickly. Down to seven. As Harkey tries to turn it around, throws it away. Kristen Williams intercepts the pass. Gets fouled on the way to the basket. Well, what a good double team that was. And, and that's how you steal the ball out of a double team. You steal the pass. Nice job by Williams to step in that passing lane and take that errant pass. Shayla Beeler, the junior from Indianapolis, commits the foul. And so Kristen Williams steps to the free throw line to shoot two. Or two free throws. Kristen Williams has three 20-point scoring games this season. Two of them have come in the last three games UConn has played before tonight. Well, with the crazy season that they've had with <laughs> stops and starts and injuries and, and who's playing tonight, they're really hitting their stride at the right time. This could be a very dangerous team come March. What's the word uh, AZ Flood used the other day? He said, we're going to be nasty when we get everybody <laughs> back. That's kind of been picked up as a theme by uh, some of her teammates. Shot clock at five. And that's going to be a travel called on Scarlett and a turnover to UConn. UConn defense holding Xavier to just 20% from the floor in this ball game. 7 of 35 shooting while the Huskies are at 63% from the floor and 50% from three. Edwards will get fouled. I just love the way Edwards is playing tonight. The way she established position in that low post to draw that foul. Just playing with a different purpose than we've seen. 6.20 left in quarter number two, the last time Xavier scored. I'm not just talking field goals, I'm talking anything. Townsend gets the steal on that uh, pass intended for Nelson Adota. Yeah, UConn's defense has just been incredible, making it so difficult for Xavier to do what they want to do. Aliyah Edwards will pick up her third foul on that contact. In terms of her countrymen and women might be more familiar with a hip check. So UConn itself in a bit of a scoring drop, but on the defensive end of the floor here, still pitching a shutout on Xavier in this quarter. 2.10 to go. tries to go between bodies, hits the floor, and they will call a foul. In that case, when a kid comes flying in like that, you got to take a charge. But Nelson Adota didn't really want to take a charge. Now, that foul is on Aaliyah Edwards, and that is her fourth. So she goes to the bench with 2.05 to go in the quarter, and Dorky Juhas comes into the ball game for UConn. So here's Michaela Scarlett, the sophomore from the Bronx, New York. One of just two players to play in all games this season for the Musketeers. Had a season high in scoring in their last game at Providence. We talked about Xavier being shorthanded. They finally break the bubble in this third quarter. 
But uh, down to the, these same eight players went on the road to Providence, a team that beat them here in Cincinnati earlier this season and won the ball game by two with a fourth quarter comeback. Here's Hugh Haas, gets position and gets a strong bucket. And Olivia Nelson Adota doing what she loves. A nice pass from the top of the key. Which cut off by Juhas, got a hand on the ball. Ducharme ends up with the interception. Williams sprinting ahead of the pack. How about the pass from Ducharme, though? Perfect. Kristen complaining quite vocally on the way back down the court that she didn't get a foul call there. Close out on the defensive end by Westbrook. We've got a hand on the pass. Shot clock down to eight. Woods got a three. <laughs> of course she does. Kasia Woods had seven made three-pointers all season. She's got a few of them tonight. Three. Nelson Adota all by herself. Strong to the rim. She'll draw the contact. No, she'll draw the travel ball. So 46.1 to go in the ball game. 40 point lead for the Huskies. Xavier has scored five points in their in uh, this quarter. Their lowest scoring quarter of the season was six that Marquette with its very stingy defense held them to. Townsend took a step. That'll be a turnover to UConn. And the Huskies will have it with 23.6 to go. And the shot clock off in this third quarter. Sean, yes for three. Court attempt for a second time in the ball game hits the rim for Xavier. But no other way to say it. What a dominant, dominant quarter for UConn. And our game reset presented by Ford as we go to the fourth for the 10th ranked Huskies. A 43 point lead on the strength of a 42 to 5 run from about four minutes to go in the second quarter through the entire third quarter. One player has done a lot of the damage for Xavier. That is the freshman, Kasia Woods. And now Como's Court Vision brought to you by Yellow Haven Health. Okay, so let's here you see up there, there's a little over 14 seconds. Now here, Ducharm here in the corner, but watch, watch Dorka Yuhas, her hand, okay? Watch her right hand. They're communicating about what, what this play is gonna be. The ball goes over there, Dor Juhas is going to go down, set that screen, quick release. I mean, that's how you do it. Ducharme, so quick, great footwork, great release. There is the line on the freshman in her return after missing four games. Just joining us, Olivia Nelson Adota back in the lineup after missing three games. Still no Paige Beckers for the Huskies, and there's that run I was talking about over the last 16 minutes. Nelson Adoto with the drive and the score on the nice passing play from the Huskies. Yeah, nice execution there against that zone defense. They worked on that a lot in shoot around this morning. Megan Hartsey drives, cut off. Nelson Adoto knocked the ball away. Westbrook, Ducharme, Nelson Adota, Juhas, and Mule. The five on the floor for UConn. There's the three-point shot from Ducharme. Missed. And Juhas couldn't get the rebound. Pranger gets it for Xavier. Fourteen minutes and 15 seconds without a point for Xavier. And UConn defense holding them from 6.20 of the second quarter to 2.05 of the third without a score. And held it without a score that time. Nice block by Nelson Adota. 
Juhas looking for position in the paint, knocked away by the sophomore Megan Harkey. Well, that ball was passed to the side that the defender was on. You got to pass away from the defense. Calhoun with the turnaround jumper from the paint did not score. Nelson Adota gets fouled hard by Harkey. What a pass from Westbrook. Just great vision. Hard foul. And Harkey, the sophomore from the Greensboro area. The, the real only size that Xavier has to counter Nelson Adota and Yuha. She's a six foot six sophomore. That'll be her first foul. And here is Olivia Nelson Adota, the senior. Who had been the only player to start the first 19 games of the season for UConn, then missed the last three with uh, the injury. And converts both the free throws there while checking the uh, bottom lip for blood while trotting back down the floor. That'll be a kick ball. So 23 to shoot here for Xavier. And they'll go across the center line to get the ball in play, but that is certainly a valid play on the out-of-bounds play, the out-of-bounds pass. Here is Beeler back into the ball game, defended by Mule. Now Harris. Mule thought she had that steal, and Desharm will get a hand in Beeler's face and be called for her first foul. Our next UConn game on SNY is Wednesday night from the XL Center in Hartford as the UConn squad rematches against Marquette. We start with the UConn pregame show presented by Cadillac at 6.30 on SNY. Huskies play Georgetown at XL Center on Sunday, that nationally televised. As we get down to the final four of the season, all at home for UConn after this one on the road tonight. Four to shoot. Harris puts the ball on her hip, will draw the foul, trying to get it to the bucket. So UConn looking to clinch another Big East regular season title. You see that everyone behind them has four or more losses in conference play. And after tonight, just four to go for the Huskies. They won't get any of the, uh, they won't get the other two rescheduled that are still hanging out there from the COVID postponements just uh, around the holiday time. So Piaf Gabriel checks into the lineup for UConn as Caroline Ducharme and Dorky Juhas go to the bench. Anamea Harris. The freshman from Omaha gets points on the board for Xavier. 71-25. There is Gabriel, who had her best game in a UConn uniform against Xavier back January 15th. Got a career-high 10 minutes, scored a career-high 9 points, was 4 of 5 from the floor. These are important minutes for Gabriel to get in, get some confidence. Get some experience. And nice play into the paint for Townsend to get a bucket for Xavier. A smart play by Calhoun, too. Nelson Adota puts it on the floor. We'll draw the contact. Again, Nelson Adota, the terrific pass. Nice job using her body there, Gabriel, in that low post. Pranger was on the high side, just not tall enough. It's 6'5", she's a big target. And another 6'5 player, this one a senior, not a sophomore. Nelson Adota back at the free throw line. So Townsend just picked up her fourth foul for Xavier with seven and change to go in the ball game tonight. Reminder, Xavier playing with just eight active players, their top two scorers of the season, no longer with the program after being suspended a couple of games for a violation of team rules. 
10 to shoot. Words floats it over Gabriel. No. Fight for the rebound. Townsend and Nelson Adota. That is a tied up basketball. It'll stay with Xavier. And here comes Amari DeBerry into the ball game for Nelson Adota. So every active player available to the Huskies has played tonight. DeBerry, the freshman from Williamsville, New York. Had four blocks in five minutes against Xavier back at XL Center in January. From outside, Woods too strong for three. Gabriel with the rebound. Way outside. Seventy-five twenty-seven. And Mule will wisely let that deflected pass go out of bounds. By way of review, most points the Huskies have scored this season came in the season opener against Arkansas when they put 95 on the board back November 14th. Inside to Gabriel from DeBerry too strong. Good pass from DeBerry from the high post. And DeBerry is a very good passer. Townsend with her four fouls with the left hand. There's a nice finish inside by Townsend. Junior from Pittsburgh with six points on the night. DeBerry again inside to Gabriel. Westbrook, DeBerry, Gabriel, and two points for UConn. That will be Harris. No. Rebound fought for on the floor. Westbrook goes down to get it. And they will call that she stepped on the end no, line. No, it's going to be an offensive foul on Is Westbrook. I thought he was pointing down at the, the end line. Now he's going to call. Her elbow. Okay. When she picks the ball up, her right elbow, left elbow, then right. Right in front of the official. All right, so AZ Fudd will exit the ball game for UConn with five and a half to go. 11 points on the night for Fudd. Four of seven from the floor, three of five from outside. That will be Avita Westbrook's first foul of the game. And a 30-second shot clock to work with for Xavier. Scarlett cut off by Gabriel. Steps back, takes the pass, and drops the three. Michaela Scarlett. Nice quick release by Scarlett. Oh. Williams, DeBerry, Gabriel, Bucket. This group in the game off the bench is making it look easy. Found something that works and staying with it. There's Woods defended by Mule. Scarlett <laughs> had Gabriel coming out at her. Had to rethink the three-pointer. Calhoun drives. Kicks to Scarlett over Williams. No. Rebound off Gabriel. Here's Woods for three. No. And Gabriel will corral that rebound for UConn. Past the halfway mark of this fourth quarter. Here's Amari DeBerry with the shot, and that goes. Boy, does she look confident out there. Everybody has played. Everybody has scored for the Huskies tonight here in Cincinnati. It is a 48-point lead with four to go. Woods got Gabriel up off her feet, but missed the shot. Calhoun got the miss. Here is Nika Mule, and they will call the block on Michaela Scarlett. Timeout. Two players who have spent a lot of hard work in practice to get not a lot of minutes in games have gotten some time and made it pay tonight. DeBerry to Gabriel, and now DeBerry with points of their own. 81-32 Huskies. Just under four minutes to go in the ballgame here in Cincinnati tonight. Look at the score by quarters. Huskies on a 56 to 13 run in this one since the midpoint of the second quarter. Ten years of UConn women's basketball on SNY. They've had a number of notable accomplishments in that time. The great.
greatest program in women's basketball history makes history yet again. 91 wins in a row for Connecticut and counting. 88, 48 the final. You can strive for, to be great, but something like this, it's just not something you allow yourself to think about because it's so unrealistic. It's something that these kids will always be able to look back on and, and know that they were part of history. And you look at those longest win streaks in NCAA women's basketball history at the first three and four of the first five belong to the Huskies. It's almost impossible. I, I like Gino's words there. It's almost impossible to put into perspective these accomplishments. You can't. And you certainly never set out to accomplish those things. But when you when you really think about it, it it's mind blowing. Harkey, good defense on Gabriel, forcing the miss there. You hear the voice of Nika Mule loud and clear calling out the defensive set. Williams to Berry, Gabriel, Westbrook, and Mule on the floor. There is a turnover on a travel by Pranger for Xavier. Well, for Coach Mel Moore in her third year here at Xavier, trying to turn around a program and build a culture here and has had to make some tough decisions along the way to do that. And um, but you know, she's, yeah, but she said the last two weeks there there's been great energy, great chemistry. The kids are playing hard. They go to Providence, have a great win at Providence. She's turning it around and there are growing pains. To bury for three. That's the, that's the phrase I was looking for. Growing pains for, for Xavier. Thank you. And yeah, how about Amari DeBerry? Coming out here like a seasoned veteran and not a freshman who gets in just a couple minutes every once in a while. Gino has talked about both of these players in the game now, DeBerry and Gabriel, about uh, the work they put in. He's talked about the, the tools, the potential contributions for them as they continue to get better. Inbound Westbrook to Gabriel. Yep. Well, Gino has said, I've got to get them in the game more, and they're <laughs> they're proving him right. And there's the freshman on Xavier's and Kasia Woods, who's had the game of her career tonight against UConn. Only Xavier player in double figures as the Barry lets another three fly. Good rebound by Gabriel. And that kind of a cruel cool bounce for DeBerry on the miss there. There's Williams. Flips it to DeBerry. Inside. Gabriel left all alone and gets another two. That's quickly double figures for Piaf Gabriel. And a couple assists to DeBerry with some nice passes from the top of the key. Cruel miss there for the junior. Just 25% from the floor tonight for Xavier. 12 of 49, while the Huskies have shot 64% and 50% from three. Remember that'll go down just slightly with that DeBerry miss. Piaf Gabriel's first double figure scoring game in a Yukon uniform. 10 points passing her prior high of nine. As we come down to one minute to go in the ball game here in Cincinnati. Shot clock at five. Harris drives, feeds Harkey, blocked. Good active hands by DeBerry. Gary Apple and Kara Walters have a full recap of tonight's game, plus Chino Oriema's post-game news conference coming up on the UConn Women's Basketball post-game show presented by Geico. Gabriel going to the rim and gets fouled. And she will shoot free throws here, will the sophomore. So that was Megan Harkey with the foul, and so here is Piaf Gabriel. Who Gino said is working so hard to improve. 
said she's a great teammate and has said, to repeat your comment from earlier, that it's important to get Gabriel and DeBerry on the floor when he can to get these minutes in game action. Five of seven from the floor, now one of two from the free throw stripe, and 11 points for Piaf Gabriel. Well, 11 points in seven minutes. Yeah. Beeler lost control, trying to dribble through three Huskies. Had a turnover with 23 seconds to go in the ball game. So UConn is going to hold Xavier to their fewest points this season. Their prior low was UConn, January 15th at the XL Center. It will be single-digit scoring in two of the four quarters, no more than 11 in any given period. And for the Huskies, they shoot 63% from the floor and 48% from three in this one. And your final from Cincinnati tonight is UConn by 54. Huskies, 89. Musketeers, 35. And UConn extends its Big East record to 12 and one on the season. And overall now 18 and five on the campaign for the squad from stores. And our player of the game tonight presented by Cadillac. We have selected the senior Kristen Williams. Five of 10 from the floor with the 13 points and uh, those other things as well. Five assists, the four steals, solid night from Kristen Williams. Yeah, she did a little bit of everything and and that that's what I know Gino Oriama likes it when you can have all the, the points spread out. Good team effort. All right, let's find out the coach's thoughts on this one. Maria Marino is with Gino. Coach, quite the defensive effort. How impressed were you with the hustle on that end? Yeah, I thought from, uh, you know, after the first quarter, you know, like I said at halftime, I thought our defense was, um, you know, was right on point. You know, uh, obviously Xavier is really struggling. You know, they're struggling to score points. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we probably play more zone than we, than we normally play. But um, I just thought everybody that played, you know, played really well and contributed something. And I like the way our bench, you know, came in the game and, uh, you know, made a big difference. So uh, it was good to get this one. You know, it's the last road trip. Looking forward to going home. Well, offensively, how were you able to execute so well? Of course, you did get a little bit of a lift from uh, Desharm and Nelson Adota back, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, having Caroline back, uh, you know, when you put her on one side and AZ on the other side, it really makes it tough on the defense. Um, and Caroline made a lot of really good defensive plays today. And I thought, I'll tell you what, I thought Aaliyah Edwards, really, that first half, I thought she was the biggest difference in the game. Uh, that's the Aaliyah that I remember, and I thought she was fantastic. And uh, like I said, everybody that played, you know, I think, um, you know, had a huge impact. And I hope we can build on it, you know, come Sunday. Definitely, and uh, you mentioned the bench getting into the game, including uh, Piaf Gabriel and Amari DeBerry. How important was that to see? Well, you like to get them some, you know, some time where they get extra minutes instead of just the last 30 seconds of a game or something. And and they both do. They both did exactly what they're good at. You know, Amari's a really good high post player, and Piaf obviously right now is you know limited around the basket. But I thought the two of them worked really well together. They've been working hard at practice. The two of them, you know, individually and together. So I was happy for them. Coach, thank you so much. You're welcome. Coach Shino Oriema, after picking up his 1,137th win as UConn head coach, the freshman Piaf Gabriel with a season high of points. Seven minutes, 11 points on the scoreboard for the sophomore Piaf Gabriel.